Hi, my name is Vince Farrell and I'm a Senior Applications Engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. In this video, I want to show you a feature that will save you a lot of time when you are inserting components or assemblies into other assemblies. I'm going to show you mate references. The examples I'm using in this video are electrical connectors, but this is a tool that can be used with any entities that are being mated the same way over and over again. To start with, I'll show you how mate references work. I'll create an assembly and insert a DB8-9 female connector. Next, I'll insert the opposite male connector, and because of the mate reference, it snaps in place like magic. You can see these mates were created automatically in the tree. That's because in each of the parts they have a folder called mate reference with a DB9 reference under it. Now I'll show you how I created these mate references and I'll use two different methods. First I'll open up an assembly I already created. To do the first method you need to have an existing assembly with the mates you want to use in it. I'll start with the DB8-37 male connector and edit it in context of the assembly. This is critical to capture those existing mates. The mate reference command is under reference geometry. You can see that there are three mating entities, primary, secondary, and tertiary. You can use just the first one, the first and second one, or all three. I'll use all three to make sure my part mates exactly the way I want it to. At the bottom of the property manager, there are the mates that have been captured from the assembly and it's really easy to add those above, just click them in the order that you want. Once they've been added, we can see what options have been specified. In this case, since we already had the mating type, it's been specified, but you can leave that as default and SOLIDWORKS will make the final mate based on the entities between this part and the mating part. The second thing specified is the alignment. If the two faces are in the same orientation, they are aligned. If they are opposite faces, they are anti-aligned. Again, you can choose any to have SOLIDWORKS specify it when you are dropping the part into an assembly. The last thing I'm going to do is name the reference DB37. I need to use the same name as the other part so that SOLIDWORKS recognizes it as a matching reference. I'll exit out of in-context editing and now I see that the mate reference has been added. Now let's add the same reference to the female part, but this time I'll open it in its own window. This shows that we can add a mate reference at any time at the part level and I don't need to have an existing assembly. The process is the same, under reference geometry, select mate reference. In this case, I have an existing mate reference that I want to match. Therefore, I need it to have the same name and the same mating references. I'll specify all of the mating information to do this. Now I'll create a new assembly with the female connector and insert the male connector. And there, it snaps to the mating part and creates the mates automatically. Hopefully this showed you how mate references can be useful and time-saving. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. Subscribe to the Huckridge Systems YouTube channel for more videos like this, and thanks for watching.